And my guess, my guess that. is that that was done um, probably simultaneously with one of the asks for the driving. Yes, the that's what it was. And it was just, it was a reduce on the, the bridge and uh, as to the driving site request for the event space. So that's still in the bank because we anticipate a potential future need for it, right, Karen? Mm -hmm. When that project is. So should we move that money down or not yet? Because it's not a formal ask yet. So, no, I, th I, I, I think that there's still twenty thousand dollars budgeted, and I think that request is still live. I think all of the kind of accounting for the bridge, because there's many pots of money at play there and i think just the accounting hasn't caught up okay um quite yet a couple other things to note is you guys still have twenty thousand in beautification team that wasn't able to be funded last year um, you still have a little over twenty seven thousand for drive in site site improvement so when it comes time to uh, potentially invest infrastructure in there you do have some funding available for that we do have uh, two, a little over 2,000 in town signage to help us with our, obviously it's gonna cost more than 2,000 to do what we're talking about, uh, but we do have some of that. Um, do we have anything left in? Yeah, we got a little bit for utility wraps. We'll have to add in more. Um, and then Seaside Festival didn't use uh, $197.20 from their last year's grant. So, we can just turn that back into unallocated. Um, I might suggest that in um, in the event that we have projects and events that don't use their full like allocation or, or whatever, we just automatically turn back to unallocated since that's kind of your catch-all bucket. Yep. But up to you guys on that. So the balance that we have for in the public improvements between now and July is the 106, 106? 106, 106, unless you want to include the projects that you've also already allocated for, like Parker Rivers Bridge Lights, and that's 181 when you include those. And do we want to talk about a, an approach as to how we might want to distribute those funds? Uh, the, the physical improvement yeah. funds? Yeah, it's definitely something that we got to talk about. It's, I don't know if you want to talk about it at this meeting since we're talking about marketing more so, but we need to have a, we're going to need to talk about physical improvement in terms of do you guys want to change the process so it, it comes in and you evaluate them on a rolling basis or what? Karen, have I bounced some ideas off each other? Um, but yeah, Karen, do you want to step in with anything on the physical improvement? Um, about you. No, no, my, 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 Steve, that we talked about this um, once before about having some kind of a uh, formalized possible, process. a yeah. formalized process of requests from town departments right right uh, because they know best right. what kind of physical improvements are priorities for them and that uh, we could put together a simple one pager um, that would identify you know kind of the who what when where and why and how oh and Oh, and how much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the how much? Um, so, what, what what I would what I would suggest is that we we give the green light to these guys to get something together and draft for us, so that we could get it out to town department heads. Yeah. I would think we want to be responsible about spending that money. Yeah, and I and I think it has the benefit too of going that way of being um, consistent with the overall plans for the town so we're not doing anything extraordinary or out of the ordinary I should say that doesn't necessarily necessarily fit in with a departmental or a board of selectmen project or goal that they want to achieve so yeah I don't have any problem with that in other words it's consistent with a plan uh, be it what you found with uh, the new vision planning or a departmental plan. I also okay. think if we can leverage by doing that, Julianne, if we can leverage other dollars, um, I think it'd be our money would go a lot further. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what's out there um, in terms of it playing and becoming a match 
for some right. kind of a plan right. um, that that uh, could then have some real leverage on a on a larger project. Um, and I think it it lends to you know more transparency is better. And uh, I think to the degree we open it up, it would be beneficial to everybody. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even. I would like to see just that if we could do what jo Joanne's suggesting, but also ask that it, our dollars should be the last dollar in, or our dollar should be used to leverage another dollar, say from a transportation improvement project or program or other grant dollars, or if we could tie in something as an example with the driving site committee on um, the project it's doing there. So. Our dollar may be the last dollar in or the first dollar in, but it's going to leverage other dollars along with it. In other words, it's going to be something bigger than than our our contribution. So this is my thought. I think I think I mean if, if I can't see if I, I don't know that you can see me. I'm, I'm here. I can. Um, I got you. Um I, I think it's a great suggestion. And I, I think it's a great idea in um not just for the 106, but even just thinking ahead to to the next year. And so um, even kind of for budget updates, if, if Steve, do you, do you mind, can I give you a little bit of an update, what little update I have um, sure. from the selectments yeah. meeting? So coming out of the selectments meeting, there was some direction and questions around the contracts and, and that. So um, we're working with town council to look at kind of everything, look at the legislation, make sure we're doing everything the right ways, which is which is great. And looking to next year, um, the budget process, um, I, I know that through Kyle that there's been some questions around the $50,000 and whether you want it or not. Our budget, our, our warrant building process um, is a little bit different this year than it's been in, in prior years. And so in prior years, we um, really relied on just finance and the administration to kind of provide us a, um, a warrant article. So that's what I was just grabbing last year's warrant article. It's very simple. Um, and I think that in the last time, sometimes you get, sometimes you got 50, sometimes you didn't get 50, sometimes you got less than 50. I have a complete history of it I didn't I think bring it you, you but, given it to us oh okay yeah, great yeah. um and so if you think you you know would like to request the 50 I mean I think you can can do that um including both the regular room occupancy and the short-term rental tax which are both part of what's in the legislation um the the number that comes out this year is $517,000. So um, I, I think that getting to the request and, you know, it's a lot of, a lot more thought um, building a budget out of that. How are you going to spend $517,000 um, plus another 50 would be 567. It's, I mean, I just never, I never thought it would be <laughs> that's, that's a big number. Um, so anyways, um, but getting into your budgeting and going back to Joanne's point, I, I think it's a nice way to start building that, that budget and even kind of coming out of that meeting. And it was one of my, I think Mary was in the hallway, Steve, I don't know if you were still there, but one of my suggestions was, you know, maybe, maybe when we're doing this, ask at town meeting that you go with a little bit more information than just a lump sum figure to be uh, appropriated and rather you have more like a, a if you've looked at the community preservation act um, the first article that happens they take the the revenues that are coming in and the revenues are budgeted and they're budgeted into the um, three mandated categories of housing, historic, and open space. And then the balance goes into um, a, an undesignated fund. I'll pass around the warrant so you can see what it looks like. Um, but maybe you do, you, you've got, when I look at the budget that Kyle um, 
kind of takes care of um, and puts together, you've, you've got the starts of categories. You've got personal services, the legal, the supplies. I'd call that administration. Um, and then you've got marketing and promotion, public improvements, um, events, and now projects. And maybe those are your kind of ballpark categories. And I don't know, Steve, it, it's a lot to kind of drop on you, but maybe it's something you want to, um, you know, I, I can easily draft an article that kind of combines what we had last year plus this with just the total showing. Um, and then maybe at a subsequent meeting, you come up with the, the budget. Now, this is this was my suggestion. I don't know if the, for what the Board of Selectmen will, will say, but I'm, I'm happy to talk this through like with Bob, but I think it's a reasonable approach. I do think just be forewarned, I, I, I think that you would need to budget the full amount um, because I think that like even with CPA, CPA has the um, undesignated reserve. Now CPA also appropriates subsequent to that first housekeeping article, all the different projects get appropriated so that, um, you know, Parker's River Bridge or Yankee Village or whatever, it, it's a formal town meeting article. We say where the money's coming from and what it's going for. If you have an unallocated bucket, you can't. You you can only appropriate from that unallocated bucket um, at a town meeting. Would be my understanding. So that I think you would want to consider budgeting full amounts, and, and you kind of have to live with it for the year. It's it's a conversation um, to have. If that if that makes sense. Yeah. The the what well the warrant is apparently what kind of struck this off in terms of the discussion with the board of select I think so. as I understand it. Um, and I did have a, a brief informal conversation with with Peter Quinn. He, call, okay. he called me on another matter. And um, I asked him and he said it was related to the question that came at town meeting, which you answered and which I was mm -hmm. ready to stand right behind yeah. you and Walter yeah. Mark. Um, uh, that that came up with a, with regard to the appropriation, and because it was yeah. just the, it was the, the language was very simple. So what you're suggesting is a warrant article that would be a bit more specific mm. about what we've spent. And I would say, or what we're asking, what, what you're planning to spend, what right? what the, yeah. what the budget it's for the next year. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I th I think that just to chime in, and I know like that that question that came up, I think that the selectmen want to know more about the fund because they want to be able to answer kind of the questions first. Yes. And I think it, that question threw us for a loop. Yep. And, um, it, and you know, I wish I was there because I would have been able to answer it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, and I mean, and, and you go into town meeting with Whatever. Sometimes you just don't know what question's gonna. So you 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 always try to go in over prepared, and we didn't have we didn't happen to have that one handy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But well, that was like something that wasn't even paid out of the tourism fund. Yeah, or something, that, right? no, it's a completely it between. Thing. No, yeah, it's it, it's an arrangement the chamber has with ten people in the state. It has nothing to do with the town of America. Yeah. Um, so I just want to ask them, so that would, the budget we would need to create is on the 517? I would say the 517, so this is, you know, the 517, mm -hmm. assuming you don't want to, you know, the pursue 50. the 50. Um, and, you know, and I don't know, uh, whatever, I don't know if you need the 50. The reason so. the question has come up from the chamber is because we have been asked multiple times from residents why we're not asking for it. So I felt as a member of the CEDC that shouldn't stay at the chamber office that it needed to come back to this group. And I think I think that just so this is uh, and I think that the change in process and I think that 
uh, Kyle and I talked through this this afternoon. I think it's it's very doable because it seems like the the room tax revenue uh, that's used so that the figures that are being used to project the FY23, which is the budget year we're going into, excuse me, the full fiscal year information that's being used for that calculation is FY21. So we should have all the information we need to be talking about the next year, um, you know, by the summertime um, before the town meeting. That's plenty of time. And I think that then what we need to do differently, and this is kind of from the new administration processes, um, is have the conversation, what do we need? What's the projection going to be? And we make the request. I think that, um, and, and have CEDC have a conversation. Do you, do you want to request the 50 this year? Do you not want to request the 50 this year? And then submit it in writing early, early in the budget process so that you know that can all be factored into the big picture uh, accounting that's going on with the town-wide budget which is underway right now which is underway right now so kind of the um conversation about 50 i think you know we've relied on one process in the past just to have it carry forward wait and see we've never really had the conversation here with CEDC saying, should we ask for the 50 or not? And so um, I think that we could ask for it if you want. Um, it is, it's pretty late in the game to be asking for it. Well, I also started asking funds. months ago, it went to the administration. Mm -hmm. So no, I know that I'm just saying. Process. So, but I think, I think that kind of, we had a good conversation today, Kyle and I kind of just talking through kind of, you know, kind of, it would be kind of a budget calendar. And I think it's good just going back to your um, your comment about structure and, and building in these processes. And I think it would be lovely, you know, if we can tie like the physical improvement stuff too, to the, you know, let's talk about the capital budget calendar. Let's talk about the CPA calendar because there's a lot of projects where there's funding from all different avenues. And, you know, you go to Steve's point about leveraging um, that we can do. Yeah, I, it would, it, once we work on what the process might be, syncing up with those two calendars yeah. uh, could be very beneficial because yeah. I I, from my experience yeah. on capital budget, the department heads go and hunt and try to find avenues uh, and sources, uh, so to speak. Um, and, but they, they haven't, Many of them haven't come here, right? Unless and, they know. I agree. Um, and I, I think that if we can coordinate that effort mm -hmm. and and kind of in a, a consolidated manner too, from an administrative point of view, say, oh, you have that project. Oh, maybe this part of money or that part of money. Mm -hmm. right. It would be beneficial. Right. So you you were suggesting, Karen, that you could you guys maybe could whack up what a draft warrant article might look like. Um, I, I, what do you think, Steve? Um, I, because the warrant is going to go to bed at some point so very soon. Right. Um, the warrant, I, I, I should know exactly what it is, but I don't because uh, we've got some placeholders there. But I, I'm sure this has an annual placeholder. Um, we don't have to worry about that. that it's just what it says. <laughs> I hope it has the right. annual place. Over, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's there. It's there. I've made sure it's there. Good. A few times. And we have what till the end of March to. to I the... think that's when it goes to the printer. So I think at this point, I mean, it's it's gathering that list of the. This is Karen's understanding. Gathering the list of potential articles, and then all the articles need to be drafted and considered, and then putting that all together, and then having that conversation with the board. You know, the board. I think usually um goes through that that list of articles and you know you go in have the conversation and they talk about it and they either vote on the articles the evening you're there or the subsequent date and then the warrant i mean i think that the warrant is closed as of today um and the articles in there um it's just what does it say yeah yeah so okay um yeah, so can you put something together as you suggested a few moments ago? Yeah, you bet. 
Are we, are we going to have enough time? Because, yeah, okay. We said something about March. The 8th and the 22nd of February? Yeah. Does that give you enough time? Yeah. Oh, that's more than enough. Okay. That's more than enough. And, and what I'd ask Steve is if that if um, time needs to be accelerated, we'll let you know and maybe yep. consider meeting if you need to. Yeah. Because okay. um, what's the close date for everything to be in March? Middle of March? No, that's the printing date, I think. Okay. Right. So do, do you want to shoot to have something back for the February 8th meeting for us? Easily. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. How does that sound, Steve? Our next meeting? Yes. Yes. Um, Sounds good. And so hopefully Ken can be with us. That would be right. really, really helpful. So how does this tie in with what the um, select board was questioning at the select board meeting with um, with this in particular with our, I guess, recommendation for the funding for the events? I, th I think that there was question and it's in the legislation and this is another question in the direction that we walked out of that meeting with um, kind of the, the most um, specific direction was um, seeking an opinion from town council on who had the authority to sign off on the, um, the contracts and whatnot. And what I don't know is, um, I know that the town administrator, that there's kind of blanket authority under some provisions for execution. Mm -hmm. And then it would be um, almost by subtraction. You say, well, yeah, but we wanna sign those or there's some situations I can't give you one where, you know, it has to, uh, maybe town council is one where the select board has to um, kind of obtain that authority. So that's where we had a brief conversation with town council. We're gonna get something in writing, present to the board. And I think that's that was the tie in there. Yeah, because I'm just trying to figure out like if we're um, trying to create with where we're putting the buckets of money, mm -hmm. Like, do they need to approve that? Do they have oversight of that? And that's where, you know, and I think that the question could be posed, and I don't know how it will go if, yeah. if you know, so let's have that conversation. And does the board want to delegate the authority to the town administrator to execute contracts or not? And ask the question. And maybe doing, um, that's, that's where my kind of idea of doing kind of an intermediate level budget um, and having the board review it with you and um, hopefully approve what you put forward or have a discussion on the, the categories of spending, mm -hmm. because then, you know, we have to go through all the different procurement processes right. that are applicable for um, the, the individual buckets. And that's where I think Joanne's suggestion of having kind of this process around the physical improvement too. I think that's, that's a dynamite compliment. Yeah to kind of everything else you're doing. The one downside on this though is when, like you said, when you identify something specifically in the warrant, mm -hmm. it yeah, sits yeah. there and you can't touch it. Right. You, you can't, it can't be amended? If you, don't, if you don't use all of it. And what happens to the money? At some point there's an evaluation every year um, and they, I think that's how they somehow create the free cash availability. There's no, a process, but, right? But this is outside of, so my understanding, I'm not the, the municipal finance expert, but um, this is a special article. Uh, okay. So the money rolls forward, just like in CPA. Uh -huh. So the money that's, um, you know, in CPA, so we have a, a, a rolling kind of budget where those appropriations that um, are in the warrant. So 10% so by law has to be allocated uh, in the anticipated receipts to each of the three mandated buckets. Okay, so we estimate the revenues. Here we're, we've got more of a known revenue source. So that's easier. Um, but th this is an estimate. Um, and we just say at the beginning of the town meeting, okay, we're going to put, and Steve, you can't see this. I'm sorry, but sorry, we're going to. We're going to add $175,000 to the uh, community housing reserve. There's already money in that reserve. And then the articles that come after it 
then draw upon those reserves. And so I think that that's how it would go forward, but you're right that you can't, if you, if you end up with a balance somewhere, and this is, I think, something you're gonna have, to, we're gonna have to have the conversation with the board. Um, how do you, you know, and there's special, we've kind of moved to the special town meeting model. So you might have an uh, opportunity mid-year. That's one, one avenue, um, but I think you would be stuck with uh, kind of living with how you allocated the funding. It, it is less flexible. Um, but, it, but it does roll. But it does roll. Right. That's it does the, roll. That's the most. You're not losing cash. money. No, I, I think with the I think the free cash part of it comes from general fund turnbacks. So say the community right. development budget of twenty thousand dollars expenses, um, we spend fifteen. Five goes back. Yeah. Um, yeah. They also look. I know that they look back into actual articles at town meeting oh, and that had a specific out. yes appropriation to to build a widget yes and it cost 14 cents less than that and that 14 cents is hanging around mm -hmm. and no one can touch it and they accumulate all of those leftovers yes. into this nice pot of money right that they then can distribute free. and it's useful yeah that's, that's the free cash yeah. you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's one I of don't... the ways I don't think our money can be used as free cash because it is no, no. it's not yeah. tax levy receipt money. But um, I, I you know I, I think we should look at this maybe talk about it in another meeting. But I, I'd be interested in the pros and cons of this. I if I don't want to have our hands necessarily tied if we want to be able to. It seems to me we can move quickly on a departmental request that comes in for I don't know something for to do with the driving site or. But the assistant town manager asking us some money for some um, economic development studies. Would we be able to do that if we had a warrant that was specified with different buckets of money? Could we could we make those addresses that came in to us, requests that came in to us, without having going back to the, the board of selectmen? I don't know the answer to that, but your budget correctly, yeah, I think you definitely can. Yeah, I think yeah. only if you have enough money in that line. The biggest thing is you're not going to be able to have anything unallocated anymore. You're going to have to allocate all that up front. Yeah. That's pretty scary. This thing yeah. Pretty yeah. Scary. <laughs> so, like, so, you'll have to make a decision on the event bucket. Yeah. All that stuff. Well, let's get some pros and cons. Let's get some yeah, pros and I, cons. We'll talk about yeah. it at the next meeting. I think that it's safe to say I'm hearing you'd like to retain as much flexibility as possible. Yeah. Well, that's Steve O'Neill saying that. No, I, the other <laughs> folks. Are, yeah, I don't know what the other folks around the table feel, but uh -huh. um, I agree. Okay. And the physical improvement suggestion is definitely something that we, we can do no problem, and it's a good suggestion that Karen and I have talked about. But just so you know, we we did that two years ago, and we didn't get a single response from any town departments. You said, we did? "Yeah, I don't I think that was before your time on the board." But we sent out a request for physical improvements to every town department. We didn't get a single. Well, I think we could identify some. <laughs> what did you say? I think we could identify some. Yeah. I'd like to ask a question. Just thinking about the physical improvement thing, and maybe we put the draft together in time for February 8th, too. But um, I know one of the unmet needs around town is um, kind of things like pruning. So this is borderline maintenance. You can't do maintenance with CPA. And what I hear repeatedly is we don't have enough money for maintenance in kind of the regular budgets. So is that something, it's 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 a semi-permanent physical improvement, but is that something you want to entertain? Those types of, I think you know, because we don't, I'm sorry, one last thing. Yeah. We, because we don't have a definition of what a physical improvement is. I, I mean, I think if I can, like I, every time I drive past the gateway sign, some of them I get so upset because mm -hmm. they just need to be power washed. They're covered with mold, yeah. right? Like that's just mm -hmm. a normal maintenance, but the DPW, they don't have yeah. the manpower or the finances. Right. So to Karen's point, you know, those could be some projects we do identify. And I, and to me, that is a public improvement. Mm -hmm. Because okay. right now it's, it's 
don't want to say it's shameful, but it's, you know, it's disappointing to see that we've had that investment in our community and that we're not able to maintain it. So like yeah. you're saying, the pruning over some of those signs would reduce the damage that's happening to the signs. Have it landed and being in a perfect example of that. When you say pruning, you mean on town property? Obviously. Oh, on town property. property. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. No, and I mean, I even think just, so i give you an example. Um, so Chase, Ch say, take Chase Brook Park, but we've got the whole, and I know you, I know you, you'll get a, a request for Yankee Village money here for the, the park because we haven't kind of bubbled that to the committee yet either. And we do have other, like a bunch of other sources of funding in that. So I'm hoping that'll be a good one. But even the conversations we'd have about that, um, the, the parks, and th these are like passive parks. They're not active, you know, active uh, sports going on or anything like that. But we had AmeriCorps in there two, like two years ago and they did a great job cleaning up. I, I don't think you were there on that rainy, rainy day, right? Yep. And, um, but, great but we job. need to keep that up. And That's part of, great. part of, like part of the Yankee Village thing and part of any of these requests that we put in, you always get the question, well, how are you going to maintain it? And it's really hard to find grant funding for yeah. maintenance. Right. Uh, but I think this is a, this is potentially a really good fit um, in the big grand scheme of things because it's not a capital budget. You can't do maintenance with CPA money if it's not in the current confines. And I'm not saying do, you know, everything with it. But um, these little things like the pruning just comes to mind. Um, I don't know if there's more maintenance at the at the beaches that we could improve the condition of the beaches. Well, and things I, like that. And just so the, you know, the Young Community Partnership has been talking to uh, Bill Scott too about um, an anti litter campaign, and so that would include you know some signage. Um, you know, maybe some posters installed in certain places on the beaches so that people are recycling. So, you know, that could be something else that we could put to it as well. And that might leverage part of the signage thing that you're working on with him. Maybe we pass the net wide this first time and, you know, there's no promises and you kind of but survey I think, the, the survey the inventory of needs and and then but i think we could identify a good chunk of it too because we worked at the town department so we right don't. no okay so we'll get something from you guys you and kyle for the next meeting yep sounds okay. good thank you Good discussion, though. Okay, Kyle, what's up on? You don't have the agenda in front of me. Uh, marketing discussion is next. Okay. You and Karen are gonna do this. Sure. On, on this one, can I just raise a question? Um, uh, is there is there any issue with you being here? I had asked it at the last meeting, and you guys told me no. I think, I, I, I mean, this is, so I'll, I'll try and answer. Yeah, please. So I think that if, um, so with any question of conflict, um, it's in the, the room. <laughs> let the, let, and, and if, if there is a question, then it would be kind of, you know, just pointing at Mary, because it's Mary's question, Mary's question to ask. I think that my suggestion would be there'd be no, um, I, I think that in terms of getting feedback on what it is you guys want to buy, for marketing, that's all fine. I would, I wouldn't have, um, you know, a vote on money. I wouldn't have a vote on a final draft or, or anything like that. But I think getting input from Mary on kind of what's worked in the past, what might be useful in the future, and then going forward, um, it's. And I'm going to just say it puts me in an awkward position to ask, like, when you guys are going to put it out for a request for proposal. Right. right. Yeah. You know, oh. I, I, I can, my yeah. concern, sure. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, if, if we're questioning 
anything with the chamber and Mary in particular on the current contract. I don't see any issue with that. It's it's it was, if we go beyond that and start questioning about, well, let me take it take one step back further. If if we want to get her input on what she feels might be relevant information to have in an RFP, good. But if we take it beyond that, I think we have to say, okay, we got to separate ourselves from the chamber here and ask Mary to, to step out of the meeting at that point. Is that okay? Is that a good meeting? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree because I don't ever want to be in the position of a yeah. My, yeah. My, my, my concern, Steve, is that um, uh, the, the mere presence of Mary while we're discussing a a a draft proposal um, that will be going out to the public um, is that she's getting an advance look at it and there could be from another RFP respondent um, a, a claim of conflict mm -hmm. and I don't want to put anything at risk um, Agreed. from Mary and so maybe we could do it this way why why not ask Mary to provide her comments um, in writing to the committee about what she sees worked really well with the contract um, and what didn't work so well with the contract um, and any suggested changes um, having been the, the, the recipient of it, um, which she suggests. And she can do that offline, not in front of us. Um, and we wouldn't discuss it. Um, um, in the same in the same venue when we were discussing the to be released uh, proposal. Okay. So I, I'm, 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 I'm so are, are you asking for me? I guess I would want like specifics about the contract itself or what the work we do. Yeah, the, the work you what whatever it could so be. Well, I, I it could be that's done in our monthly reports that you guys are provided with the quarterly report or the, the monthly spending. and the quarterly. I mean everything's in there. We we tell you where our challenges are. We I mean that's done on a regular basis in the quarterly reports. What in, in terms of if there are any other things like contract management, yeah. the pro the the process you have to go through, the reporting, would you would you recommend that it not be quarterly reporting or monthly reporting? Um, what what would be a reasonable amount of time for reporting? Um, and, and any suggested to you, you've been living with the contract, you know it best. Um, what are the things about managing it and and the 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 terms and conditions that are in your contract that you think um, might be better set stated. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I don't know if you have any, but that, that would be, I think, helpful. But discussing this, I feel puts, I feel it puts you in not in a good position. Yet. No, I absolutely, I thought what our course, like from my conversation with the committee last time, I thought it was you guys asking in your current contract physically, like, what is working, you know, on marketing online, you know, I thought you were asking specific things here. And I think, I think so that we included the RFP in the packet um, from last time, just to provide a scope, you know, and we, we maybe could have gotten away with fewer pages from the RFP, um, but uh, to provide like the scope of what it is we were looking to buy. And it was the events, the visitor services, Traditional, traditional, online. traditional, and that. And we're using this as a basis for the new one. Correct. This is the, I would the, just say that it's food for thought because I think, I think that, so I put together very basic questions, kind of, and I, I don't know, and I like, I think you have some very good comments. Um, but kind of, what's the goal here? What are you, what are you guys looking to accomplish with? buying marketing um, and that really the oh, that's getting so bad. Um, what marketing efforts have best met the goal and what marketing efforts are needed and I think that that's the kind of feedback you know that's just what's worked and what hasn't worked and what will work kind of going forward and I think if you're suggesting those comments be provided kind of outside the scope of a meeting um, you know, that's up to you guys. It's, it's, I think, a clean. Suggestion. Yeah, it would be a request from the committee to Mary as director of the chamber. Um, 
you know, what worked and what didn't for the management of the contract. Yeah, and, you want and, the management, yeah. but also the deliverables. Yeah, the you know and, what were what most effective in terms of the you what were the most where do you think you were most effective in delivering the product for us? What gave us the best bang for our buck? Yeah, I'm, 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 hear, I'm yeah. hearing you, but I'm I also can you pull up and you get a quarter of it up to my uh, sure. I'll try. Do you understand that it's it's such a it's like going and asking another company to give you the recommendations for what to do for the future so you can put it out to compete with us. I, but yeah. so you know what I'm trying yeah, I know, I know. It's it's like insider information. Correct. And then we could give you information that could hurt us getting the contract. Yeah, saying like you could really have somebody who specializes in Yeah, but we would never you know, I mean. We provide you. I, we will. We will do that. It's, it's a difficult one. It's it's really hard. Well, what is what is did you anyone talk to the town council? Did they give any advice at all? No. Well, that they the we we broached it briefly with town council, and I I think that um, you know any any conflict of interest, you usually you would go to the and I can never remember if it's IG or AG. And and they have the conflict of interest hotline, and you call up and you present your case. And if you really want the Cadillac version, you you get it in writing. It takes longer, but usually you can call and get an attorney of the day. You, you, you know, no, I, I did it. I did it when I worked as a town employee. I actually reached out to them to make sure it was pure. Right. So yeah, would, I did just the. Yeah. They write it down. Yeah, so it's either written to you, but they keep their documentation everything. So even if they give you a verbal opinion, mm -hmm. they keep it documented on their end. Yeah. Maybe maybe we should do that. To, yeah. We don't do anything. No, no, Mary, Mary. Have to do Not it. The, the, I was using that. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the royal league. The royal league. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm looking to I, I'm looking to protect. You know, yeah, you, 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 and you're you're yeah. very well capable of protecting yourself. I know. Um, yeah, they just a form online, and they call you. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I just filled something out. Right. Oh. So but, I, 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 I'm sorry. Did I did I hear correctly, Karen? That the town council just basically referred it off. Did he? Uh, yeah, I think that you know, with conflict of interest and ethics type questions. They, you know, they need specifics, and it needs to be presented from, uh, I don't know, first person. Like I don't ask a question on behalf of someone else. It's it needs to be asked by the. So what, the what, what, what I'm just wrestling, what I'm wrestling with though is. No, no, no. Mary, Mary shouldn't have. I don't. In my mind, Mary shouldn't have to ask the question. We're the ones that are having the issue with it. She's not. So we should be asking the questions of the ethics authorities. Well, what is the specific question we're asking? Well, my, my simple way of looking at it is we need to put an RFP together. We need to solicit for the RFP. We can't have someone that could be a potential beneficiary of that RFP in the room while we're doing that. That's my simple okay. way of looking at it. I, I think that's a, a basic, okay, yeah, I mean, and I don't believe I've ever been in the room when you guys have gone through this process or have voted for funding. I think it comes down to discussion. You know, part of the discussion on the vote. You just have to recuse yourself. It's a public meeting. No, I don't even recuse. No, I don't even room. recuse myself. I'm not present. I don't yeah. attend the meeting. Okay. Period. We just we need to have a meeting without Mary there that still has a quorum present. Right, but if you have these specific questions for me about the existing contract, yeah, that would be fine. I think if you ask me for any input on the request you want to put out, that's where there's a conflict. Yeah, I I don't want to do that. That sounds right. Reasonable. So what I'm saying is, if you have questions for me on the existing contract that we're still working on, I mean, you guys were all sent this the other day. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have that might help you do what you need to do. And I, and I, to me, again, just me saying this, I think we're savvy enough as a group that we can glean information that Mary's given us through the existing contract 
to pick out pieces that we might want to include for the RFP. Yes, no? Okay. All right. Yes, I think the Mary provides us a ton of information. Yeah. Um, on a regular basis. Um, so, and if we do, if we do wind up with some questions as we go through this, we'll just put them in writing and we'll send it off to Mary. Yes. But while we're discussing the proposed RFP, she can't be in the room. Right. right. Agreed. And I don't want to be. <laughs> okay. Um, so because Kyle sent this out, did anyone have any questions on the current existing contract? Because I know it's been a very awkward couple of years with COVID, how like things have, it has been a challenge for sure. But um, I think we'll do very good with what we have remaining. Kyle, were you able to pull up? The quarterly quarter report? report? Yeah. This, and this is something we can um, put together and ship out to you all is the series of uh, quarterly reports. So monthly, the chamber bills monthly, um, and we you know audit that just for uh, consistency against the contract. We check the funds, and then accounting runs it. Kind of, it's a it's a tight ship. Um, Mary can attest to that. <laughs> and it's gotten tighter. It's, and but it's good. <laughs> it, it, it's good. And no, and I think, you know, I want to knock wood. I, mean, We've done I think well. we hit a groove now. Yeah. But um, anyways, and then quarterly, um, there's more of this narrative about kind of how's the performance been um, in any one of the individual categories. And they usually, I was taking a look at some of them, they kind of talk about you know, what did you do last summer? Um, what was the goal and kind of how did it go? Um, so, and we try to do comparison like the na national averages, how we're doing in comparison, you know, and that's how we determine, okay, I'll, I'll just give you like um, online display campaigns. So that's something we do like quarterly. Um, and if it doesn't go good, then, you know, are we changing our target market? Are we stopping it? Are, you know, are we enhancing it because it's doing so good? So this is, this data that we provide to you quarterly really helps us drive where we're going in the future and determines what's working and what's not working. And, and these, are, these are the quarterly reports we get yep. as part of yes. that usual agenda. Yep. So yep. They're, they're public documents. Yep. If you want, we can consolidate them and yeah, maybe send them out to you. Yeah, just that might be as we're idea. thinking. Yeah, that would um, be a good idea. That would, I think that will help. You. Yeah, if we have them all together. Yeah, that would yeah. make a big difference. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think we can hunt for them. But I'll send them. No, you have that, and you know, and honestly, if anybody wants the invoices, so you see the. I got them all saved. Them all. Um, Take you know, me two seconds. Seeing the sample. Every, yeah, sure. Every Maybe month, just give her a good one. How many? Pages? <laughs> How many? I don't know why is it? It's like forty. I was looking at it. The time it takes one. for me to just produce an invoice to scan yeah. to send over to him. How you want to see the invoices? Agendas and what I do are in these. Oh my God! Printing the checks front and back. It's got to be a three-hour process minimum. It's, the invoice is probably forty-five pages. Sometimes, and they average, you know, depending on, they could be 15,000 a month or they could be 30,000. This was the last one. Because every invoice has the invoice itself, and then there's proof of payment, and that's like two sides. And but then we have, why, well, yeah. these are the checks you're talking about. I see. Yeah. But then it's reimbursed. Why, yeah. you guys have your internal spreadsheet here, and Karen has seen it. We have this massive spreadsheet. Like every single thing, every like, so we every check middle. to the penny that we match the town. So it's a huge, and, and then we actually track, and I don't know if you can go to the end of this gems report, but we track the volunteer hours of our marketing committee, our events committee. How many hours did it take to hang the holiday? Like, I hang holiday decorations for probably 15 hours. I saw it. Yeah. I help. I help sometimes. Yes. Yeah. 
so so see on the bottom it'll say YCC staff and it'll say who and then up above it's like how many marketing hours from the marketing team and the events team how many visitor centers so we have volu community volunteers that help without those volunteers this contract would never happen because yeah. you would need 10 people to manage it yeah. so that i want you to know is very important to recognize i like that axe throwing update <laughs> oh my god i'm telling you wait till that's the ribbon cuttings next week anyway. so we haven't had any in Don't a while. Don't slip it when they should throw the axe at the ribbon. Is it? We are. <laughs> oh, at the Ryan Kuhn. Yeah. 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 So, so the ribbon. So so what's wrong with the ribbon? What's that? Are you going to throw it? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're so the, re the, the, the reporting and the invoicing and, and all the work that included it, and I think that was one of the things that the town was concerned about a few years back, um, that we've asked to have addressed in a contract. And I think there's evidence here that shows what we asked for a few years back is in fact happening. Um, am I correct on that, Karen? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the ad that um, kind of like, a, a, I don't know, like a consultant for wastewater is gonna give us an itemized bill on how they spent their time. And this way, because the um, contract includes um, not a stipend, what it's a fee, Lock the fee. monthly fee, whatever um, is on there. So this is the backup for that to say, and this is what you know the flat fee um, paid for. This and this month. is really and good because when you do have a community member like we did at town meeting ask, you've got the backup. Me too. Me too. And that, I can I make a comment about the RFP? I would just make sure that as much detail you can get from whoever is overseeing your contract. This is crucial. Mm -hmm. But it's time consuming and they, you know. Yep. Okay, I've, I've seen, I don't need to see it anymore. Okay. <laughs> so, so don't uh, send it to me. So, <laughs> don't send, so, send so if I can, I did give Kyle um, a heads up. I was going to be asking this and this is, this is the first time, I think, maybe the second time in all the years we've ever managed a contract that I have to ask this. We're asking for an extension for 30 days for the quarterly report. We are, I don't even want to get emotional, but we are just overwhelmed with the Winter Carnival. Mm. The response in 24 hours of our first post was 170 shares, and it's reached over 23,000 people, and that is with one post. Yeah. We have not done another post. That's scary. The Cape Cod Times is on us. The radio stations are on us. Everybody wants a piece of this one. And um, yeah, so it's, I'm going to be honest, we're over budget, not over budget, but we're going to spend every penny on the event line and the chamber and board of directors agreed this morning to actually put thousands of dollars into the event to make it successful. So um, I will be asking every one of you to volunteer <laughs> if I can. Um, so we'll get that out to everybody, but this is probably going to be one of the bigger events that we'll ever see. We're, we're expecting we're going to have to turn people away at the gate. So you're asking for a 30 day extension of the existing contract? Uh, no, yeah, 30 day, con uh, 30 days for the quarterly report it's usually due uh next week oh and jen just cannot build that yeah. into her schedule right now so if everyone's okay with that uh, i'm okay with that everyone else oh yeah it's fine yeah. okay thank you yeah. we, don't, we don't need any formal vote or anything on that i think no no yeah right okay. what's the date on that again february 18th from 5 to 8, 19th, 12 to 6, and the 20th from 11 to 3. So that's all just leading into the school vacation. That's good. Can you imagine if it wasn't, if it was school vacation week? So we have the ice skating rink, which we ordered today. I talked to Kyle, a great um, banner to go over the fencing that recognizes that the CEDC funded uh, the rink. And that way it can be used every time the skating rink gets used, that will be up. 
Um, we have everything from fire dancers to um, Elsa in, I don't even know her name, from Frozen, professional yeah. skaters that are coming to skate and then do photo ops with families. We have balloon face paintings, um, miniature like golfing. We have frizz, uh, ultimate Frisbee, we, uh, petting zoo. <laughs> it is. So I should get work? on the chamber website and check it out. No, don't, it's not there yet. We're like so trying. Like, okay. <laughs> Next you, week, we'll is the skating rink up yet, Mary? No, because we worried about vandalism. So we're yeah. not going to put it up until the 12th, um, a week prior. And we're going to have Jersey barriers across the parking lot. So if you can kind of envision half the parking lot will be the event. And we talked to Mr. Nicanello today so that if we get such a big crowd, he's actually going to open up the gates so that we can get to where the driving range is. Um, so. Cool. So it's going to be at the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Where, where where is the rink going to be set up? In the parking lot. The entire parking lot event will be at Skull Island in the parking lot. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So you'll be able to see the entire event like from 28. Gotcha. Great. And we're just praying it doesn't rain. Or if it snows. Yeah. That'd be better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. okay. That would be too cold to rain, so I think you'll be all set. I went on a tangent, but thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. What's Kyle? What's next? Um. So if you guys are all set, well, how are we leaving off the marketing discussion? I guess would be my question. What what are, what are we saying? You want to discuss this at a future meeting? When Ken's back, or um, I think Ken's been on a corn anymore either, right? Yeah, I, I, correct. I, I'd like to have Ken, 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 yeah, go ahead, Karen. I was just going to say, maybe it makes sense to consolidate the um, quarterly reports. The quarterly reports. Yeah. And then we can push that out to everybody um, and, you know, have a have, schedule it for the next meeting um, or the next meeting, um, you know, because if you, yeah, I think you have to schedule it for a subsequent meeting, yeah. and then you have them without Mary. So yeah, that's the easiest. And I'm just going to remind you that you, you know you have to think about timing when you put the RFP. You know, it has to be 60 days, and then you know with this existing contract, you don't want to have a lapse That's because by July you're already going to whoever's marketing needs to be thinking about your fall and winter campaign in the summer. That's what yeah. it's going to ask. It's 60 days once we post it. Oh. I'm going to defer to my procurement guy. He couldn't remember if it was there. Yeah, I have to look that up. I don't know. Yeah. I, so we'll pull together a, a kind of. So time just, just check on that, Kyle, for this 30 or 60 day requirement. Yeah, I will. Yeah. So you guys want to call a separate meeting in February then? Because the 8th is kind of booked for with Kathy at the drive in site and the. Uh, Short term yeah. rentals, the 22nd is the Bill Scott show. So, yeah, if, if, if everyone doesn't mind having another meeting, I, I would like to go that route. And hopefully, Ken will be around. And so, if you want to split in between those two meetings, you could do February 15th. How's that work for everyone? First of all, does everyone okay if we have another meeting? Okay. Okay. I think the 15th will be okay for me. I'm not going to be here the piece, though. The 15th, okay? Yep. I think. Yeah. It's me as well, too. Okay. 4 30. We'll have it just on the contract. Just on just, marketing. On the just on marketing contract. Just on the RFP. Yeah. Just on the RFP for the marketing contract. Yeah. Yes. Correct. 4 30? Yep. And then if anyone has questions on the quarterly report, just let Kyle know that you want to that. There you go. Okay. Kyle, you can send out an invite on Outlook. Yep. Great. All right. So the next topic is the uh, tourism grant application revisions or potential revisions. 
Um, the one thing that I put in your packet was from, let me just pull it up. From the only other town on the Cape that does something like this, which is Provincetown. So you can see their kind of um, application process and their evaluation process. There's also their evaluation form afterwards. Um, so we, I don't know if you guys wanna <laughs> be here the rest of the night talking about this, but another suggestion would be if you guys want, um, you know, we could have a couple of members work on this on their own and bring some proposed changes back to the committee. Um, or we could maybe dedicate another future meeting to this. What this you guys is strictly talking about for right events, right? This is for your tourism grant uh, events, yeah. This is what they use. Event grants. They call it marketing grants. Marketing grants. Right? And that usually goes away in November. Yeah. And they've yes. got the evaluation. And we thought we would do this just because it was fresh in our minds that we had just gone through the board system. Aaron's like, how we've done that with something. Right. Uh, who was really hot on this? Joe was, Ken. right? Ken. Ken was pretty hot on it. Oh, if it was Ken, I think he'd eliminate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, up to you guys how you want to tackle it. What was, what was your conversation before? Well, I think Joe had a lot of questions about the process. Oh, the other, not the Joe. Other Joe. I have okay, some too. Yeah. But the other Joe. Joe Manning. Okay. There was a lot of discussion about that. Do you restrict it to marketing only? And mm. The same discussion that we've been having for as long as I've been here. We do it every day. <laughs> what's, your, what's your pleasure? Do you want to have a this sole meeting just on this topic? Or... Do you want to have? I don't know. I, I'm not really sure what exact changes you guys want, so it's tough for me to kind of lead the topic. Because yeah. well, I was thinking about the can. So I was thinking about it last night, and I guess it's the process for me about it's the same thing every year, right? Someone like the Seaside Festival, they you know finish their event, they get their next year application in, they get it incomplete. And then you have someone like the parade where we fund every year. I'm not trying to finger point, I'm just saying, but then their application is really not full detail and complete. So like, how do we make the process fair? For some group, I don't know. That's why you guys went to not, not accepting and complete applications. I I think there's some differences too between a new applicant and a recurring applicant too. Like maybe even some of the questioning should be a little bit different. You know, you're new, this is kind of, you know, here's a couple more questions or maybe there's a couple more questions on the recurring people, but I think it is two different categories. That's a good suggestion. And, and we talked to it at one point of, um, the longevity of some of these contracts and what they're doing versus getting some new, oh, yeah. new blood in here as well. So um, do we want to start a process? I'm just throwing this out uh, where we, we let people know, hey, you received our funding for the last 15 years. Um, this is going to be the last year and <clears throat> we're going to move on. we talked about that as well. I don't know if there's any desire to actually follow through on that or what, but um, all that said, maybe what we want to do, I hate to have another meeting, but um, do one of two things, have another meeting to, to talk about this in a little more at length and, or uh, just have a couple of folks get together, bring some recommendations back to the committee and take it that way. I think also, didn't we have the question too, if the selectmen wanted to be more involved in this whole process, then they should be involved in this part of it too. So it's not just our criteria, it's, going to be their criteria if they're going to be judging or you know reviewing or you know, being more in-depth in it. Yeah. In yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I what, what's the pleasure? What, what do we want to do? Have another meeting just on this? Yeah, I think probably table it would be my suggestion. Write, everybody write down their notes and then just table it until we figure out what the selectmen want to do and yeah, I mean, we could do all that work and then 
Okay. And I have some notes that, you know, that I wrote down the last time just for future. Lucio, that's a good point. Kyle, when, when's the RFP go out for this next round? For the events, it usually goes out in uh, October. October, yeah. So we have, October. We have some time. So, okay, let's table it until we get everyone back and we can kick it around a little bit more. So, sound good? Sounds good. All right. That said, what else we got? We got minutes to approve? We got minutes to approve. Okay. Does anyone want um, to make a motion? I'll make motion to pass the minutes of uh, January 11th, 2022. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Do we need to do a roll call, roll call Kyle? Uh, I don't think so, but might as well. Okay. Mary? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Joe? Yes. Steve-O, yes. Okay. Staff updates are the next. Staff updates. Anyone have any, anyone have any updates? Kyle? I want to go first. I don't have anything at the moment. Uh, nothing new from the planning board. We're still discussing the two amendments that we're going to be putting forward to the town meeting on short-term rentals and seasonal housing. Um, the chief uh, of police met with us last week um, and provided some um, some more input. So once we have a, a new draft of those amendments, I'd like to bring them to the committee to just get you guys on board with what they look like. So I can do that at the next meeting. Okay. Ready. We, have a, we have a planning board meeting in between. And it would just be for information purposes. Yeah, so we're going to have, we it on have the, yeah. the next agenda. Yeah. Good. Mary? Oh, that's it. Joe? That's Nothing for me. Kyle, I know. I, the only I, other thing, Steve, that you should know is that um, oh. I am now the planning board member for the Water Resources um, Advisory Committee uh, because uh, Tom Barron has passed away and oh. had, had, um, had relinquished that position a couple months ago when he was so ill. So I'm 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 doing it hopefully temporarily until we can get a new planning board member. So I'll try to provide some updates as best I can on that. Okay, and thank you for that, Joanne. And you just reminded me that um, I volunteered at Kyle's insistent um, <laughs> request. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I uh, am the member of from this committee to the design review committee. So. Um, I will be giving you updates periodically as that committee meets. But um, so I just I just started. I think last so last week it was my first meeting. So that's it. Actually, I do yes. have an update. If the select board approves it tonight, I will actually be on the disability commission. I saw. Oh yes, I did see that. Yeah. All right. A couple quick updates for me is that it's the housing summit, virtual housing summit, on the third of February. I'd encourage everybody to attend if they can. It's going to be via Zoom. Okay. Uh, and wayfinding, I, it was a great suggestion to contact uh, Cape Cod Commission. I've contacted Cape Cod Commission about wayfinding. And they're going to get back to us. Oh, that was very helpful. They're, oh, good. they're going to get back to us because that was a great plan that the town of Orleans did, I thought. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and that's exactly what we're talking about that we want to do yeah. something very similar. So then we can use that plan to go get a grant for the actual construction. And I'm not, I'm not sure if that's what Bill Scott was thinking of when he brought it up, but um, when, when I saw when we were developing the calendar of things, I said, I just, you know, I've been spending so much friendly time with the Cape Cod Commission. <laughs> <laughs> I've really grown to appreciate all the work they do. Uh, I, I was on the site and I went, oh, well, this could be something that might be helpful. To us. Yep. And we're also working with them on an EDA grant for wastewater so be working with them a lot so yeah so. sort of one more update too last night the board of health um was determined to put in um considering a mass mandate and so the chamber had sent that out to our membership and um, quite a few of them came in last night the Davenport company um Matt Pitta, 
Uh, if you haven't seen it, you might want to watch it. And um, Chris from being on Maine in Yarmouth Court, uh, Jerry Manning called in and then a couple of residents. And then I also spoke to it and they did vote it down. But on January 7th, they're bringing up a um, vaccination mandate. February 7th? Yes, February 7th. And um, so, of course, that's got the business community very stirred up because Mary Craig is talking about that you won't be able to go into a restaurant in town. You won't be able to go into a retail store unless you're showing your vaccination card. And, um, you know, that's a huge ask of our businesses that have been hit so hard. And they keep comparing us to, I think she said, East Brookline and Boston. And, you know, you can't compare Yarmouth to those towns. And these businesses cannot take any more of a hit. So, <laughs> just letting you know. So when they, when you say those people, the, like the Jerry Mannings and the others, who, they called into you? No, they called into the board. Of oh, oh, to the meeting. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, opposed to. Opposed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, well, P-Town has their tax requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they 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 do have. I, I experienced it for the first time. I'm glad I have on my phone. And I would probably have to quit my job. Yeah, because I can't get vaccinated. So. I couldn't even go into a business and be a business owner. Mm -hmm. So, but those are the things they don't think about. They right? mm, don't care well, about. Yeah, or care, but you know. So anyway, wow. um, if you have an opinion, you might want to chime in and watch that meeting. You feel so, but it did, it did that, was it a unanimous, a unanimous no or? Yes. Oh, that's good. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think because because of the they feedback heard oh. Oh. from the business community. They're very swayed by public yes, comment. Are. And I can tell you that um, it's going to get public right now because some of the business owners went to Ed Lambert. They mm -hmm. very are making this. Well, then they're going to pull it back. <laughs> and that's not by the doing of the chamber. The business owner, when we sent the e-blast out from the Board of Health, uh, letting people know about the meeting, they responded. It reminds me of the time that they tried to ban um, flavored tobacco in Yarmouth, and we wrote a, a letter opposing that. And when they found out that we wrote a letter opposing that, they pulled back the amendment and they said, we'll do education instead. It, nothing, nothing, but they did I, anyways, though, didn't they? Yeah. I expected to see a lot different what I'm seeing out here in Arizona. In other words, I thought I really expected to see no mask wearing whatsoever people just going about doing their thing but all the um stores that we go into or the uh, restaurants that we go into all the workers there from the people at the front desk to behind the bar everyone has a mask on and they ask you to wear a mask when you enter the facility but you obviously can take it off when you're there um, and even if you go to home depot or some of these other, everyone there has a mask on so i was really really surprised to see that I have not there's no um mandatory requirements for showing any certificates or anything like that that you have received a shot but everyone that i've seen has been you know compliant with as far as, far as the mask so just sharing that for what it's worth yeah that's, i think we're seeing i mean i would say 99 percent of the people coming in the visitor center everyone has masks yeah. we got our rack meeting what was it last night? <laughs> we had like three members who weren't wearing a mask. And then I saw Mary Craig commented on that at the Board of Health meeting. Yeah, they're one of their members. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm not telling. Oh, you kidding. No. And so one of our business owners called him on it. If you're trying to put a mask on, you know, you should at least have the Board of Health. <laughs> I'm not telling Kurt Sears to put a mask on. Nobody else <laughs> wants to do it. No <laughs> with, the, with the housing summit, just going back to Kyle saying, we are asking. Um, because it's Zoom, we're going to have breakout rooms, kind of like visioning and oh, all yeah, that, to um, so have people um, kind of RSVP. So you, you email Mary Wagan. Um, it's in all of the kind of the, the social media and whatnot around it. Um, just let Mary know so that we can plan ahead to have enough facilitators um, to go. Yeah, it sounds like the first one in person was great. And yeah, it's been it's recorded except for the breakouts, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Another quick update is we're still working on, you can see this board back here. We're still working on the wastewater web pages. I think eventually when we get them up, they're going to be really good. It's been taking kind of a long time to get to that point. Uh, I think we're over planning it and not actually going out and doing it. But once we get it up, those web pages will be really nice. About, you can see kind of stuff we're talking about, but it's going to, I think I've talked to you guys about in the past, it's like economic and land use, health and environment. It's kind of the yeah. subtopics for wastewater, everything you'd ever want to kind of ask in one clearinghouse page, FAQs, household and business. Although all the stuff that people really care about, we won't have right off the bat, like how much is it going to cost? To, <laughs> that's how, the number one question. how much is it going to cost me to connect? And that's all that people care about. That's all I'd care about if I was yeah. a you know, resident, but um, so yeah, that that keep an eye out for that. We'll let you know when it goes live, but that's that's something <laughs> exciting on the horizon. Hey, one other thought on that, Kyle, not to belabor the meeting, but you just said how's it, what's it going to cost, but also how are they going to do it? In other words, if you think about it right now, take my myself as an example, the the wastewater goes to the back, and when they run a line down residential street, it's going to be in the middle of the street. So that means changing the line from out back somehow going around 90 degree angle out to the out to the street. So there's some extra cost in there. Somebody ought to be thinking about how that's all gonna work because those are gonna be the questions. How much is it gonna cost them? Hey, how are you gonna do this? My septic's in the back. Now you want me to bring it out to the front. How, how's that how's it gonna work? Also so they, I just put in I just put in a new septic system last year. Do I have to rip that out like when the yeah. sewer comes those kind of questions. And those are things that are T V D. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. And all those in favor? I oppose so voted. Good. Great, great guys. Time, Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Right. Thanks, Stay Steve. Yeah, enjoy the weather. <laughs> bring, I'll bring some sunshine home with you. Please do. Bye-bye. <laughs>